Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve from Snow Foundry. Today, I'm gonna to take you through installing and configuring Amazon CLI or Command Line Interface version two. There's been multiple versions of this and we're gonna work with version two, which is new and updated and it's a best practice version now. In version one, you had to install Python, but oftentimes you might have the wrong version of Python or have to worry about local libraries or incompatibilities uh, or downloading the whole bundle. In this version, it's self-contained and you don't have to worry about any of those things which makes it a lot easier. As you're working with the cloud, you're gonna to wanna to grow and develop your skill set, And so clicking around in a web interface is not always the best way to do it. A command line client allows us to do things repetitively. So I can type it in the command line, I can cut and paste that into my documentation, I can share it with a coworker, I can put it in the CI CD system. Uh, there's lots of value to the command line and especially when you need to repeat tasks. So using the shell, we're able to do things like loop over, uh, lists and then we can use that in combination with the CLI to get a lot done quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is, is open AWS's official documentation page, which I've included right below the video. This will help you if you get lost or if you want to know about the features or if there's any updates or anything, it's always good to reference the official documentation uh, before checking YouTube. Uh, assuming that you have this open, the next thing we're going to do is click the Installing AWS CLI, and then we're going to click the version 2. Um, here there's a couple different options. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, Linux. Also super cool, they do have a Docker image. So in a future video, I'll show you how to do this. Um, rather than clutter up your local workstation with any of this stuff, it's much easier to just run it in a Docker container. And then you don't have to worry about anything, and it's isolated, and it's not in your host. Um, and it's a little more complex just in terms of setting that whole uh, infrastructure component up, but uh, the reward's pretty big. But for now, we're just gonna assume that you're a developer on a laptop and you just want the CLI real quick. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click Linux here, and it's gonna have a big warning box. It's just telling you that um, we're using version two. In the past, version one was the predominant version. Uh, version one was a little harder to install, um, and that's now in like legacy support mode, whereas version two is the version they recommend. And that's what I'm showing you how to do today. So uh, in the wild, you may run into AWS CLI version one, uh, and you may want to upgrade that to version two. Um, from here, the prereqs are really straightforward. Uh, most systems have all of these things. I'm running Debian 10. So the one thing I do need to do is I need to install curl. Uh, so I'll do an apt install curl and unzip. I'm fairly certain unzip's on here. There we go, it is. Uh, and so now I have the curl command. And so what we'll do is, is um, in my home directory here, uh, so we'll just do this to make double share. And from there, what we can do is, is just follow the command. Uh, you wanna make sure to have the right architecture highlighted. So uh, in the last video, I was using ARM VMs. They do have one for ARM here. Uh, in this case, I'm using a regular 64-bit or just, you know, if you have a laptop or something you're using, it's probably not ARM yet. Maybe in the future it will be, but um, you'll definitely wanna get the right one. And all we're going to do is download this file and unzip it. And so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste that command. And that's going to download AWS CLI v2.zip. And from there, all we got to do is unzip it and it will make an AWS directory. Now, the most important thing is, is that the instructions here tell you to do a sudo dot slash install. Uh, that requires super user privileges and it installs it for all users. I really like to keep all of my tools confined to just my user. Uh, that way I can make different projects with different usernames and not have them conflict ever. So if we go ahead and type less on readme here, uh, what we can see is, is that uh, there is actually an alternative here. So there's a section in the readme itself, which says installing without sudo. And it just tells us, go ahead and run that installer command. Uh, and then it will link it to .local and .local bin. Uh, so we're going to do this one instead because that makes it a lot cleaner. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that. And now we can run that. And so uh, one thing to keep in mind is that um, if I type AWS here, AWS uh, does not exist in my path. So we can type export path and you can put this in your bash RC or whatever. And we'll just include the existing path. But then we'll also include this path here and then that way it picks it up at the end. Whoop, let's type this path, and then we'll just do the middle click here to paste that in. And now when I type AWS, it finds it. And so we're good to go. Um, the AWS CLI itself has major functions. 
as a grouping construct. So uh, if we type AWS EC2 help, this will give us all the commands for the EC2 uh, service. So typically, like if you wanted to see what was in your EC2, uh, in terms of like, did you spin anything up or anything, you would do a describe command. And there's different kinds. So if we just search for describe here, uh, you can see there's all sorts of different things we can describe. Um, you can describe elastic GPUs and hosts and images, etc. Um, I tend to use uh, describe instances. That seems to be a really common one. Uh, so if we do this, describe instances, that will tell me everything in my AWS account uh, that's an instance in EC2. Now, the one thing you're going to see here is that says, wait a minute, I don't know what you're doing. And that's because the AWS CLI gives us access to all the Amazon APIs, but we haven't told it who we are and we haven't told it what we're authorized for. Um, and so here is where they recommend running AWS configure. Um, if we run AWS configure, what's going to happen is it's going to ask for an access key, a secret access key in a region, uh, and that will install them in a configuration file locally. So if I say access key is equal to test, secret access key is equal to test, and the region is US East 2, uh, and hit that, if we CD to our home directory under AWS, there's two files that are created. Uh, one of the files is called config, and the other one's called credentials. So if we look at config, what we'll see is, is we have the region name there. And then if we look at credentials, uh, what we're going to see is, is that the access key and secret access key, um, they're both set there as plain text. So as a security conscious administrator, that's not the best because any script on your system or any uh, malicious things going on, they can retrieve those without you even unlocking them. Uh, there is a solution to this, however, and it's called AWS Vault. Um, so you can Google AWS Vault and they have this fantastic blog entry uh, from 99designs who is the company behind AWS Vault and it talks about uh, securing AWS credentials and engineers machines and it talks a little bit about why you'd want to do that. Um, the short answer here is is that you never want to share or post your access key or your secret access key. Um, systems like GitHub actually scan for that and they try to stop it and they try to notify you and Amazon tries to scan them to make sure that you didn't post them also. But if they do get out there, malicious actors could take those and pretend they're you. And that can include things like running Bitcoin miners or doing things with your account, and they could rack up huge bills really quick. And so uh, we want to keep these as secure as, as possible. Uh, if we pop over to the 99designs GitHub page here, uh, you're going to see all the installation methods, which probably covers your platform. Um, at this point, I don't use Homebrew on Linux. Uh, I'm a big fan of the native package managers and the kind of the basic Linux tools. Uh, so you, the top one here says downloading the latest release. Um, that's the one that I would go with. And so if you do this one, it's going to have these binaries here. We're going to download the AMD64 one, and then that will go to our downloads folder. Uh, what we could do with that is we could go to downloads. And if you see, I got the AWS Vault Linux AMD64. We could chmod that to make it executable. And then what we could do is, is if we echo our path, um, at the very end there, we have that, that local bin directory. And I think that looks like a great directory to also put AWS Vault in. Since we already made it for the AWS CLI, uh, let's just reuse that. And so we can move this uh, and we'll just do a middle click to paste that highlighted text in. And then just call it AWS Vault rather than the, the longer dash Linux dash AMD64, no need for that. Uh, so if we do that and run it, now we have AWS Vault. And so AWS Vault will let us add a IAM access key and secret access key, but it will make us use a password to unlock that vault. So that way, uh, when we're not using it, it stays locked up. Now, there are some nuances there. Um, once you unlock something in a system's memory, it's in the memory of the system. So that threat model is um, fairly hard to defeat. If somebody has local access to your system, it, it's tough. But um, AWS vault files are kind of the ones that are likely to be backed up. For instance, you may accidentally back up your keys one day and uh, you don't know where that goes or where, you know, you, you have to make sure you're encrypted there or who the administrator is, etc. cetera. Uh, the keys might leave your possession. With AWS vault, uh, they would be locked on the disk, which is very valuable. And there were other threat models like that that this covers. Uh, it's also really, really handy for handling multiple accounts. 
Uh, the AWS CLI supports profiles, but AWS Vault allows us to also have multiple accounts in one setup. And so uh, I tend to just use this by default because it does make it more secure and adds another layer. Uh, and the UI is fairly good in terms of uh, the commands and the ergonomics of that. So if we go to the actual 99designs page, uh, they're gonna show you a bit of a command line output here. And to run AWS Vault, we type AWS-Vault add and then an alias. In order to use the AWS CLI and AWS Vault, we're going to need an access key and a secret key, which is different than test. Uh, that shouldn't work, hopefully, for Amazon's sake. Uh, so pull open the AWS Web Console and then click IAM, and that will pull up the Identity and Access Management. And then we're just gonna go ahead and click our user. And under Security Credentials, we can go ahead and get a key under Access Keys. So just click Create Access Key, and that will programmatically generate one. It's not like a password where we type it in or anything. They make it for us, and then we download it. Um, and then once we download it, we can't retrieve it again. Um, I would caution against the download CSV file link. For whatever reason, when people download these, they tend to stay in your downloads folder. Uh, that's not great. And so I don't recommend ever distributing your keys in a CSV file over email or otherwise. Um, definitely put it in a password vault. So before I go ahead and click any of this, um, I'm going to install KeyPassXC. That way we can store it there. Uh, so on the Debian system here, I'll go as root and I'll say apt install keypass xc. And this is just to make sure that we have somewhere to put our passwords that's not plain text. Uh, everybody who is working on a cloud system should have a password manager 100% of the time. Um, as to which one that's up for debate, one password is highly recommended. Uh, there's also pass itself. Uh, I've used pass extensively. I really like that one, uh, but KeyPassXC might be a really good way to get started with those. And then you could export your passwords later if you needed to. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and switch back to IAM and I'm running i3 here. So I can just type KeyPassXC and we'll pop that up right next to that one. Uh, and I'll click create new database. And this is just not related to Amazon at all, but you need somewhere to put this stuff. Uh, so we'll just call it passwords for now. And I'm just gonna enter a password here. And it's a pretty weak password, but uh, that will do for this video here. And then what we're gonna wanna do is, is we are going to want to add an entry. Uh, and so in this case, I'm gonna add an entry and I'm gonna call it AWS IAM root account. Uh, and then for the username, I'll just put in my access key ID. And then for the secret access key, I'll put that in the password field and paste that in one more time. Let's do this. Okay, and so we did that. And so that's now in EPASXC. Uh, so I can close this window. The reason I show you that is once you close that window, the secret access key is not coming back. You're not gonna retrieve that. They don't allow you to. Uh, so you get one shot at it. And so. That's why people do tend to download the CSV often, but then it just sits there on your disk. Uh, this way is a lot better. And then now if it's on our disk, uh, it's in an encrypted format, which is really important. Okay, so now that our password manager is set up, we can go ahead and set up AWS Vault. Let's go AWS Vault, add test, and go to the password manager. And for the username, this is really our access key ID. And we'll just paste that in. And then for the secret access key, that's what we have says the password here. As so we just right click and go copy password. And then here we can do a control alt V here to put that in. And it's gonna ask you to make a key ring. Uh, AWS Vault, depending on your platform, will encrypt it in the way that is native for the platform. So AWS Vault knows we're on Linux. And so it's trying to add this into our key ring. Uh, that's a topic for another video in terms of how do key rings work and what does that even mean? Um, so for now, what you can do is you can pick a password and put this password in your password manager also. And then that way you'll have everything together in an easy to access way, and you can then pick the solution as needed. Uh, so for now, we're gonna set our key ring password and it's there. Now the AWS vault is set up with a test profile, we can access AWS, but we need to do it inside of the vault. So if I just type AWS uh, STS get caller identity, 
Uh, right now that request will fail and it says our security token is invalid. Um, but if I run AWS vault exec test, which is the profile name we made and bash, I can spawn a shell that has all of my information now in my environment variables and they'll go away when I exit. Uh, so what we can do here is, is we can say AWS STS get caller identity, and that will allow us to actually use those credentials. So what we've done is, is we've installed the AWS CLI only to our local user. We've installed AWS Vault only to our local user. We've created an AWS Vault and put a password and key pass so that way we can unseal that vault and then use our credentials. And that means attackers, even if they get in your hard drive, uh, as long as it's not resident in memory, that means that your credentials are safe. They're not being backed up somewhere. They're not in clear text. You're not copying them all over the place. And it's very, very easy to organize this across multiple accounts. So you can name them by role and instance name and region, et cetera. And that way, if you have a whole bunch of AWS accounts, which is a really good boundary uh, in terms of security, uh, if you can have an account boundary, it's very strong, uh, then you can use these tools to effectively manage that. So let me know down below if you have any questions or things I can help with. Otherwise, good luck orchestrating. I'll talk to you in the next one.